Imagine seeing a flying saucer gliding just above the ground, silent, eerie, and unmistakably real. You'd swear you just witnessed an alien craft, but what if I told you it wasn't from outer space at all? What if it was made in Canada? I'm Bill, and this is Buffalo Air Park. Let's dive in. Hey friend, you know how we always joke about those grainy photos of flying saucers? Well, strap in, because I'm about to show you the aircraft that was so strange, so secret, and so ridiculously bad at flying that it might have accidentally kickstarted the entire modern UFO craze. I'm talking about Canada's very own attempt at a flying saucer, the Avro Canada VZ-9 Avro Car. It's the early 1950s, the Cold War is heating up, and military planners are terrified the Soviets will nuke all our long, beautiful runways. The solution? An aircraft that could take off vertically, from anywhere, even a farmer's field. Now, where did this circular idea come from? Picture this. In 1953, the Royal Canadian Air Force and British intelligence hold a top-secret meeting in West Germany. They're chasing a bizarre rumor that a German engineer had built a working flying saucer for the Luftwaffe during World War II. Avro's chief designer, John Frost, was there to cross-examine the guy. The German swore that his saucer used a cushion of thrust to hover above the ground, and conveniently, all the evidence had been destroyed to prevent the Allies from finding it. Convenient indeed. Whether Frost bought the story or not, history doesn't say, but soon after, he started building one of his own. They called it Project Y, then Project 1794, then Weapon System 606A, before finally settling on the VZ-9 Avrocar. The ambition was wild, a circular, supersonic, vertical takeoff fighter-bomber that could fly at Mach 4 and 100,000 feet. The design relied on the Coanda effect, using directed airflow to create lift. The air is actually sticking to a curved surface. That's new to me. The U.S. military loved the idea. The Army wanted a flying jeep. The Air Force dreamed of a radar-evading supersonic saucer. Together, they poured over 7.5 million into Avro's strange, disc-shaped dream. When the prototype rolled out, it looked straight out of a sci-fi comic, an 18-foot-wide metallic disc that hovered on a cushion of air. But when they tried to fly it in November 1959, the dream nosedived faster than you can say conspiracy theory. Instead of Mach 4, it managed 35 miles per hour. Instead of soaring into the stratosphere, it became violently unstable above three feet. The engineers even coined a new term for its uncontrollable wobble, hubcapping, because it looked exactly like a spinning hubcap on the highway. One test pilot compared flying it to balancing on a beach ball. It generated unbearable heat, deafening noise, and went nowhere fast. The Avrocar was, in the end, a very expensive jet-powered hovercraft. But here's where it gets fun. The secrecy around the project might have fueled the UFO sightings of the 1950s. Think about it. A top-secret, disc-shaped craft being tested near U.S. bases. Mysterious lights hovering over the ground. Leaks to the press, including a 1955 Look magazine article claiming the Soviets were building saucers. The diagrams they used look suspiciously like the Avrocar. In truth, this was classic Cold War misdirection, what insiders called policy by press release. 
feed the public a false lead, blame it on the enemy, and let imagination do the rest. So, when people near test sites saw this thing skimming low over the earth, wobbling and glowing from its exhaust heat, it's no wonder they thought they were seeing a UFO. The Avrocar program officially crashed to Earth in December 1961, but John Frost never stopped believing. He claimed that with a redesign, the Avrocar could achieve high-altitude flight, maybe even reach that dream of a supersonic saucer. Conspiracy theorists took it from there, suggesting the U.S. Air Force buried the project to develop its own flying disks in secret. And to be fair, this was the Cold War. Stranger things were happening behind closed hangar doors. Today, two Avro cars survive, one at the National Museum of the U.S. Air Force in Ohio, and the other at the Smithsonian's Udvar Hazy Center. They're silent now, but their stories live on every time someone swears they saw a flying saucer. So, next time you hear about mysterious lights over a military base, just remember, it might not be aliens. It might just be a Canadian flying jeep. They couldn't quite figure out how to fly. And that wraps up another tale from Aviation's Stranger Side. Until next time, keep your eyes on the skies for those mysterious lights.